There have been a lot of Mortal Kombats. This franchise has been around long enough that it's several sequels, multiple spin-offs, ever-expanding cast of combatants, complex fighting systems, and decade-spanning narrative might be a little intimidating for some players. And when things get that messy, people tend to want to slap that big reset button. And eventually, that's exactly what the people behind Mortal Kombat did. Hey everyone, and welcome back to The Completionist, where we don't just beat the games, we complete them. And this week, we're kicking off Video Games at the Movies Month, the month in which I'll be completing games that have been adapted into feature films. Films like Mortal Kombat, which wasn't so bad, and Mortal Kombat Annihilation, which was, you know, a movie. Now, this will be the very first MK game ever done here on the channel. And thankfully, when it comes to the quality of the gameplay, it's also not so bad. In fact, it's the one that rescued the MK franchise from the pit of mediocrity, becoming one of the most successful titles in the series. That being said, it's also one of the most absolutely gruesome games ever to complete. So guys, this is it. It's time to complete Mortal Kombat 9 from 2011, which, they called Mortal Kombat. Mortal Kombat! Here comes a new challenger! Yeah. Danger! So by the late 2000s, the days of the classic MK titles that most players remembered fondly were long gone. No, by that point, we were firmly in the 3D era, with its myriad of uninspired newer characters and gameplay that strayed further and further from the series' simple roots. This era would eventually spawn a game that featured every single MK character ever and utterly bland, featureless fatalities. And after that, there was only one logical next step. MK vs. DC, which was not received well to say the least. It was the culmination of how MK had lost a lot of what made it special in the first place. When a Mortal Kombat game is rated T for teen, something has to change, and something did when Midway, the guys behind the classic MKs, went belly up. They got snapped up by Warner Brothers and reborn as NetherRealm Studios, quickly getting to work on a new title that would return the MK series to its roots in more ways than one. 3D fighting was dead. Combat on a 2D plane once again reigned supreme. The weirdos from the later games were gone, and the weirdos from our childhood returned. And some serious attention was given to the fighting system, eventually fostering a thriving competitive scene. Even the game's premise revolved around returning to the past, featuring time travel shenanigans and a plot taking us all the way back to the events of the original Mortal Kombat, with Earthrealm's chosen warriors fighting in the tournament on Old Man Shang Tsung's island, all the way through the happenings in MK3, with Big Daddy Shao Kahn invading Earth cause he ain't nobody's bitch. For all intents and purposes, Mortal Kombat was rebooted, reclaiming much of its lost glory, and the fatalities were back, in style, and I can't show them. At least not unedited, thanks to the fact that YouTube will undoubtedly put the demonetization whammy on this video with the quickness if I show you the goods. So please excuse the black and white colors whenever something juicy pops up, and I guess we'll have to get a sponsorship for this video to break even. We ain't got no sponsorship! What? Ah, uh, then screw it! We'll do our own ad! What are you talking about?! Don't worry about it, let's move on! I chose to complete Mortal Kombat on the Xbox 360. Sorry Kratos, you can't play. Lots of fighting games are pretty lenient when it comes to completion criteria, but not this one. Not by a long shot. There's the usual, beating arcade mode with every character, but there's also a challenge mode, an entire treasure trove of goodies to unlock, dreaded online achievements, and an ungodly amount of grinding. But I can understand that all that busy work and content can probably be chalked up to the fact that this game was MK's renaissance. It was just as much of a celebration of its past as it was a vision of the franchise's future, which means that there's going to be a lot of ground to cover. But while some of the stuff that was resurrected was great, other parts were... Yeah, it seems like for every enjoyable advancement that MK9 made and every bona fide gem from its past that it polished off, it also took one step backward, remaining disappointingly reverent to its origins. 
Okay, so it's not like everything that Netherrealm plucked from MK's grave was poorly handled. In fact, for the most part, the stuff in this game is dope. Just look at this god danged roster. They basically recreated the cast of MK Trilogy plus a couple of refugees from the 3D era. You're lucky you're so gangsta, Quan Chi. The character choices were a pretty smart move since at this point they needed to capture a big audience. And one of the biggest audiences available were all the kids who used to play the classic MKs that were now grown-ups. Much like how Street Fighter 4 focused on its classic cast with its series re-emergence, MK9 chose to go back and dig deep in order to make sure that just about everyone's favorite character was present and accounted for. Yes, I do want an entire rainbow of ninjas to select from, give them to me. The only ones from the 90s that are absent are the bosses, but you can fight against most of them in this game. And you can do so on all of these stages, which are almost all facelifts of classic locations. Who could forget the Deadpool? And while staying in dingy ass Outworld, don't forget to visit our famous pit. And of course, there's always the scorching depths of hell! Along with MK9's return to classic 2D combat, everyone's movesets are reverently recreated too. Sub-Zero's gonna freeze, Jax's gonna smash your face, and Cabal still has super speed. Yo, why the hell did Cabal have super speed? Yeah, whatever. And of course, there are plenty of disturbing fatalities to go around, with both references to past classics as well as new murder candy. Oh, absolutely metal! Dude! Dude! Oh my god! Oh! And Babalities are back! Yay! You can even fight against a handful of classic secret characters by satisfying criteria that harkens back to their original unlock conditions. It's just one of the many ways that it's clear that the people in Netherrealm were not only fans of Mortal Kombat's past, but were proud of it too. But as I said, not everything needs to be exhumed. Some things should stay in the past, especially when compared to the brand new cool stuff in this game. Cool stuff like MK9's meter system. It's got three segments, with the first bar giving you access to new enhanced versions of your special moves. Two bars allows you to break out of a combo, while the full thing permits you to perform the brand new, extremely violent, extremely involved X-ray maneuvers, which are basically MK's version of super moves. On the surface, these new techniques just seem like yet another new feature, but in reality, they add a whole new dimension to the fighting. Do you continue zoning by spending your bars on enhanced fireballs as soon as you get them? Or maybe you should save up in case you have to save yourself from a nasty combo. Or maybe you're just that kid who just wants to see a Shadow Man kick someone so hard that they vomit over and over again. This kind of decision making through meter management is a great new feature. Okay, now compare that to a more archaic mechanic like how the combos work. So in Mortal Kombat, there aren't really any links. You don't really have to use timing in between individual moves in a string, since most of the combos are performed by kind of dialing in the buttons in predetermined orders. And the thing is, most of this game's unique attacks are buried, sometimes three or four attacks deep into a string. Now, it's not necessarily a problem, but it makes it that much harder to learn than a lot of other fighting games that have combos you can just feel out for yourself. I'm not saying MK should just be like other fighting games, and I'm not even saying that the system is bad by any means, but it is very MK, and it feels a bit counterintuitive, especially when completing this game has me hopping between characters all the damn time. I have to constantly open up the move list just to be able to do anything competent. It may be an MK tradition, but it doesn't feel great. Jumping back to all the cool new stuff, there are all the updates to the characters' designs. Some of these guys look better than they ever have, with some getting some much needed redesigns. Striker is slightly less lame now. Oh, and Smoke, your hair is so luscious. Never before have these formerly palette-swapped ninjas had such diversity in their looks and movesets. Even Sector and Cyrax have human skins, complete with unique animations. Tight! But on the flip side, some of the ladies' outfits are too over-sexualized for my tastes. Now look, there's nothing wrong with having sexy characters, but not all of the ladies have to have this one buxom body shape with skimpy outfits and win animations that are essentially stripper poses. Melina, being the crazed freak that she is, fits the bill perfectly, but Shiva? Not so much. She's like a half-dragon warrior queen. I'm sure she gets sexy on her off time, but not after a fight. This just seems like outdated design that comes from outdated thinking. 
But on the other hand, MK9 has a fully functional tag mode, which some MKs have done before, but never in such a robust way. You can do two-on-two -two fighting in almost any mode, with assist moves, switch attacks, and even four-player simultaneous play. But then, you've got animations that lack any sort of impact. There's no hit stop in this game, making it hard to track hits, and making some combos, while lengthy, look ridiculous. All this stuff is as old as Mortal Kombat itself, but it feels like it's only here because of tradition. And tradition, for tradition's sake, feels like... I think this game's philosophy can be summed up by its story mode. This is the first MK with the cinematic story mode, which is a cool idea. Playing your way across the most famous events in MK history with fan favorite characters sound like a blast, especially with all the time travel hijinks thrown in, resulting in stuff we've never seen. Cyber Sub-Zero? Well, that shouldn't be. But in execution, this story mode is hindered by old ideas and uninspired methods of storytelling. It's essentially just a bunch of cutscenes punctuated by the occasional fight. Fights which add virtually nothing to the plot and literally nothing to the character development. There's a lot of padding here. You'll want to stop talking now. But if it's not like that, then you won't mind if I... That's it! Time somebody shut you the hell up! Come on, guys. I get that a lot of people like these modes, and that's totally fine, but at the end of the day, they're not that well written, acted, or directed, just like MK always has been. MK9 was the best MK that's ever been up to that point, hands down, but it ain't perfect. It represents a point at which the series was still shedding its old skin and becoming something better. Here's hoping that as the series continues to grow, they can tell the difference between the stuff they can afford to lose and the stuff that we never want to let go. Talk to you. It's over, Jarek. YouTube ad revenue is dead. Patreon won, and you're gonna subscribe. Never, Sonya. I agreed to watch the video, not be forced to pay money. The algorithm lives on. No one's forcing anyone to pay. Everyone's already enjoying the completionist Patreon benefits. You're the last one, Jarek. Never! I'm not gonna buy Come in, Major Briggs. I'm trying to subscribe to patreon.com slash the completionist. What? Ah! Sonya, this is Major Briggs. I'm trying to reach you from the $5 donation tier. <laughs> going somewhere, Jarek? Dax! I thought you were going to. Thought I was what? Gonna forget about Gerard's Game of the Month Club and the completionist episode commentary that you get access to for $35 a month? I, I'm sorry, Jax. P please don't drop me. Wait, I, I promise. Too late, Jarek. Wait, I promise to check out the completionist Patreon at patreon.com slash the completionist. I, I promise to turn off ad block. This is this is brutality. Oh, you can't do this. Wrong, Jarek. This is not a brutality. This is a fatality. <laughs> I have played a lot of fighting games for this show, many of which have had skill intensive and time sync achievements, but I've never had to complete any fighting game with achievements this demanding or grueling since Ultimate Marvel vs. Capcom 3. Mortal Kombat 9's achievements are not how fighting game achievements should be done. Check this out. In MK9, there's this place called the Necropolis. Inside, you can view character models and stat breakdowns for each and every fighter. Plus, there are milestones for each stat, which means that as a completionist, I'm honor-bound to perform 100 fatalities, 150 x-ray attacks, spill 10,000 pints of blood, and play a total of 24 hours with each and every character. Look, even disregarding everything else on that list, I'd have to play this game for a month straight just to meet the time requirements, and that's exactly what I did. The very first thing I made sure to do when I knew I needed to complete this monster was to set up an Xbox in the office just to run passively, racking up time in training mode. You come in the morning, switch out the characters every single day, that's what you have to do. Sure, I managed to have my time by doing two characters a pop with the tag mode, but this sh 
was still utterly ridiculous. And it wasn't like I was only compelled to do all this because of some obscure in-game catalog either. Mastering every character with all their requirements is tied to an actual achievement. So yeah, I changed things by not actually playing the game for weeks on end. But guess what? MK9 clearly does not respect my time, so I will respect it. I win. Cheesality. Cheesality. I also realized that this kind of achievement was never meant to be grinded out this way. It was meant to be obtained over a long period of time while enjoying your copy of MK9. But even still, 24 hours per character is just way too much. Now, not all the achievements are bad, though. Stuff like having to beat the game with everyone is expected, and it feels fine for the most part. But it didn't feel enjoyable, because while I did so in the back of my mind, I always knew how much hardcore grinding I'd eventually have to do. So yeah, I said arcade mode to the easiest setting with one round fights. I don't care, cheesality. Make no mistake, MK9 actually does have some legitimately cool content that's not grindy though. At least it doesn't feel grindy because of how varied and legitimately fun it is. It's the challenge tower. 300 assorted fights and games, ranging from wave clears to test your might to purely random horse And it gets tough too, with its endurance fights and boss matches, and it takes a long time to get through. But even so, it feels fun to complete because nothing else in the game plays like it. And it's satisfying to do so because you know that once it's done, you'll never have to do it again. There's a clear end in sight with the challenge tower, and it feels unique, unlike the grinding. Dear God, the grinding. By the time I finished the tower, I had more than enough coins to completely clear out the crypt. MK9's delightfully macabre collectible store. No sweat at all. Something else that turned out to be no sweat was one of the achievements I was most worried about. It was tied to a mode known as test your luck, which completely revolves around random horse shit. The achievement is for getting all three dragons to pop up on the roulette wheel, which I got after 10 minutes. But theoretically speaking, I could have spent hours or days trying to get that. Look, I dodged a bullet, but just because I happened to luck out doesn't mean that I don't recognize how messed up it is to put an achievement behind odds like that. That doesn't even come down to how much you play MK9. It comes down to how much you play this one mode. No one deserves that. And no one deserves to go through the hoops that you have to jump through in order to complete the online achievements. A few of them are reasonable, but a couple of them fall firmly under the domain of the grind. And grinding online matches in this game is a problem because it doesn't have the most active community. Yes, I know I am late to the party and that this process must have been far easier back in the day. But once again, even in the most ideal conditions, accomplishing what these achievements ask of you ain't right. But of course, I boosted my way through with the help of some of my coworkers. And we're not just talking 10 ranked wins in a row. That's the easy stuff. We're talking about 2,500 respect points. What are respect points, you ask? Well, there are these little things that you can earn in King of the Hill fights, and they're awarded by your opponents and spectators after a fight. If the online environment was a bit healthier with full King of the Hill lobbies, I imagine that reaching that number might be a bit more reasonable, but... So even with my boosting partner throwing me the maximum 10 points after every win, this process took hours and hours. Thankfully, you can use several classic MK codes during the versus screens, including one hit kills. But even with that, this was backbreaking, but not nearly as backbreaking as filling out the hell that was the Necropolis. Let's just get to it. 100 fatalities may not sound like much, especially with the help of that quick kill mode, okay? But trust me, it is. I quickly started to resent the characters who just had to express themselves with long animations in their fatalities. Hours for every character. Hours! Even maxing out the x-rays with the deck stacked in your favor with tag matches, max rounds, and an infinite time code takes hours. Hours! And you'd think that after all that grinding, the pints of blood would take care of themselves. But no, consistently, I'd still have thousands of pints of blood left to spill after all of that for each and every character. And even with the help of a high-speed combat code, it took, well, you can guess how long it took. And yes, 
there are absolutely no mid-fight indicators for when you reach any of these milestones. So I had to use a counter app on my phone to keep track of all the fatalities and x-rays. And as for the arbitrary pints of blood, I had to just keep backing out of the fights and checking my progress back in the necropolis. All this, plus the Fortnite leaving the Xbox idling, was a nightmare and easily the most time-consuming, soul-crushing part of this completion process. Now I have to thank my crew for the help with grinding and the multiplayer because there's no way I could have done it without them. And that's a shame because I like fighting games and I like achievements, but combining the two should be done very carefully or else you end up with situations like MK9. I can understand how things like this can happen though. It was the age of achievements and impossible challenges were a part of that zeitgeist. I just don't think anyone should have to do anything like this for a single achievement. And technically, they don't have to. But many people are compelled to. And I feel bad for them. I feel bad for me. I feel bad. MK9 has a built-in reward system with its coins, which you earn for doing anything and everything. So, at your leisure, you can always pop into the crypt to reap some rewards. But you don't really get direct rewards for accomplishing the game's several Herculean efforts. The unlocked achievements themselves are the only markers for things like beating the game with everyone and finishing all of those dumb online fights. There isn't even an ultimate reward for mastering every character. Big surprise. But there is one reward for completing the challenge tower. After I smoked my way to victory against these three bosses in a row, my reward was this thing. It's a costume called Flesh Pits Molina. Emphasis on the flesh. I appreciate Netherrealm acknowledging my efforts, but I'm insulted that they think that TNA is the ultimate reward. When it comes to MK9, I stopped having fun with it extremely early on. Now, completing this game became a grueling grind almost immediately, which can overshadow the legitimate fun that it actually does provide. This was one of the most trying games I've ever completed. And even though this franchise has come a long way and things have definitely gotten a lot better, I don't even want to think about Mortal Kombat for a long time. When I completed Mortal Kombat, there were 50 achievements unlocked, many of which were a case study in how not to do fighting game achievements. 300 challenges completed. These were the most fun I had with MK9 and probably what I will remember most fondly. 2,730 fatalities performed. As cool as these things were, they quickly lost their luster when I had to do so many in a row. 4,061 x-rays landed. I've had enough. Enough! Over 270,000 pints of blood spilled. Please let it end! Over 30 days of total playtime. And... One more chance to play this clip. Now, as much as I still love Mortal Kombat 9, deep down, the honeymoon period with this game does not last long at all when you have to complete it. It's got some great features, and it'll always be fondly remembered as the game that brought back Mortal Kombat from the brink. But even if you disregard all of the grinding, there are much more enjoyable Mortal Kombat's out there today that you can play. So, with that in mind, guys, I give this game my completionist rating of Play It. Play it. That's all the time for today, guys. So please, as always, let us know what you thought about today's episode somewhere on the internet. If you like the show, do me a favor, hit that like button, leave a comment down below. And if you got to the end of this video, tell me your favorite fruit. I want to know. Mine is strawberry. That's it, it's all you guys. And I'll see you next week for another brand new episode of The Completionist. Bye bye I'm just making up words here because none of y'all watch to the very end. So if you do, wave at me. I'll know you'll wave. I'll know.